I get a lot of questions about V2G in the comments in the on the various videos on the channel and it promises so much and we're all so hopeful but I've just started laughing it's just like a running joke every time someone talks about V2G I think yeah 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 okay and uh, this is what this picture this slide depicts here it's just a laughable situation now let me just uh, quickly give you a brief overview and then I'll get into some of the nerdy details at the end and show you some of my things thinking of why V2G is kind of far away, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. So first of all, V2G specifically is referring to vehicle to grid, um, but there's also vehicle to load, which loads of vehicles have at the moment. You could plug a toaster or a kettle directly into a lot of electric cars and you could power appliances. Um, and then there's vehicle to home as well. And we'll get into why there's a difference between vehicle to home and vehicle to grid. But overall, the term that some people use is V2X, vehicle to something. So um, let me get into a little bit of this. One of the biggest problems with this rollout is that not everyone is on the same page. And with technologies like this, you've got so many parties to try and get around the table and to try and agree stuff. So here's a brief list. Car companies, charger companies, DNO, engine, energy companies, regulations, home and car owners there's actually way more than this than these as well because the car companies themselves like nissan or uh, kia or whoever it may be quite often they don't make their own components so there'll be another layer of component manufacturer that will be trying to work with a car company to try and get everything standardized get everything working and working well and this is kind of one of the advantages we've seen a lot with some of the things that Tesla does, because it has a lot of vertical integration, it's tried to bring as much in-house as it possibly can, so it doesn't have to outsource as much. And one of the biggest successes of that is the Tesla supercharger network. Um, anyway, one of the things I want to jump into is V2G may not directly benefit homeowners. It can obviously help the grid and it can act as like a virtual power plant. You plug your vehicle in and the battery that sat on your driveway can power not just your home but it could power your neighborhood neighbors homes as well but we know that export rates are falling generally speaking um, there may be some nuances there with time of use tariffs but you can see that vehicle to grid may not be lucrative and so it may be more financially beneficial for the homeowner to focus on vehicle to home v2h so charge your car up super cheap overnight you've got a big 50 to 100 kilowatt hour battery set out there you can easily run your home all day long no matter what you do even if you've got a crazy heat pump or whatever else but so the other reason you may want to focus on just v2h is you can take some of the parties out of that first list this long list here if you can Keep the vehicle to home or the vehicle to load. You can keep it your side of the meter and not connecting to the grid in any way, interacting with the grid in any way. Then there's less regulation, there's less DNO involvement and less energy company involvement and something that you can manage and you have more control over. So we know all of these things, they they just take time and they just slow things down and red tape and admin and everything else. But you still need to align these parties. Broadly speaking, the car manufacturers, the charger manufacturers and the home and the car owners. And at the moment, they're not. This was a trial which, depending on how you look at it, was successful or unsuccessful. And I think injured did absolutely amazing things with this uh, trial that they did. I think the guy behind it, absolutely brilliant. And they've they've piloted a program to show that it can be done. But unfortunately, the Chadamo charger, which you see on the right-hand side there, it was fitted to some Nissans and I think some early like uh, Hyundai Kias have got it as well, like first-gen Souls, for example. They had a Chadamo connector, which allowed bidirectional DC power to flow in and out of the battery. But you would need a very expensive wall box, a, a charger essentially, to make that happen. And so it's almost like a giant solar inverter that was needed, but you kind of need some more expensive componentry than what you would 
typically have within a solar inverter so it's a lot more complex it's a lot more expensive and at the moment very very niche so this was a trial it's been going on now for years i don't know six years or something four years maybe maybe not as long as that but there's some people who've been really happy and over the moon and saved loads of money but unfortunately you can't buy a lot of like good long range day-to-day -day use electric vehicles with chatamo connectors which brings us on to a couple of issues here so first of all is the dc versus ac issue so indra went with the bi-directional dc so it's flowing that direct current straight from the battery the battery stores it at dc but in our homes we use ac um, we've recently seen as of september 24 uh, my energy have announced that they are working on a bi-directional zappy but it is ac so they know that car manufacturers are starting to push more towards having bi-directional chargers fitted at the moment if you've got an electric car and a charger at home your charge point is basically just a smart switch that's all it's really doing it's connected to the grid with some big chunky cables and it uses a timer or relays or whatever however you've got it set up to open that switch and connect the 240 ish volts that are in your home or on the grid to your vehicle outside and then your vehicle does the rest of the work your vehicle outside has the inverter the charger whatever you want to call it that converts ac to dc and so we've seen now the Renault 5 it was released to or announced to much fanfare and um what what came with that was uh the announcement that they were partnering with a charger manufacturer now the charge point itself is very very similar to a lot of what we may already have but it allows that ac to flow both ways it's a bi-directional ac charge point and we use those terms charger and charge point interchangeably but actually i mean being a pedant the charger is fitted on the car the charge point is fitted on the home the charge point itself isn't charging the battery it's the hardware that is within the car currently and so this is kind of a big leap to move away from the dc trials but moving towards ac and that seems to be the way that everyone in the industry is moving so there are a lot of advantages of ac our charge points in our home are already ac so switch into a bi-directional ac charger will be very simple for an electrician in theory most of the ac charge points fitted will already have ct clamps either for load curtailment or for solar export and so that that ct clamp will be essential when it comes to v2g and v2h um, seven kilowatts is more than enough i mean there are ways that you can have um bi-directional ac chargers in a home that are way more than seven kilowatts but uh, seven kilowatts is more than enough for almost all homes even like mine if you're running multiple appliances and the heat pump and everything else most of the time you won't exceed seven kilowatts uh, a massive advantage is cars are already fitted with ac chargers ac dc uh, converters and so they just need to be upgraded to bi-directional ones and we already know that lots of vehicles have been produced with this so there are a lot of hyundai kias teslas uh, fords you name it there are loads of vehicles out there that have these bi-directional ac chargers already and there's several cars that already support uh, 2.3 kilowatt or 3.6 kilowatt vehicle to load uh, AC inverters so they are taking the 400 ish volts DC that's in your battery pack converting it to 230 240 volts for you to plug your appliance directly in and then it's a small step then to connecting it to the home and connecting it to the grid but the the 
the barrier isn't the kind of technical what's the difference between V2L and V2H and V2G yeah you can get into the weeds of a lot of that and I'm sure there's some like electronic whizzes out there that could tell you much better than I could as a layman but uh, a lot of the problem there is about regulation so uh, a couple of things about protocols and standards most of us with modern electric vehicles would be familiar with these connectors if you're doing AC charging you'll typically use a type 2 Two connector and if you're doing DC rapid charging you'll use one of these CCS type 2 connectors and you can see the standards underneath the IEC standards unfortunately even a lot of vehicles that have these charge points haven't fully adopted the full standard of that IEC and the protocols that come with it and uh, one of those things uh, I'll, I'll move on to talk about the communication ISO that has now been established and is being kind of slowly enforced uh, so that all vehicles with CCS will have V2X and they will have to conform to that ISO 15118-20. And of course, on the building side, the electrical regs, they're always a revolving door that people need to keep up with. So this is a brief little uh, nerd's look at some of the protocols that are contained within um, this standard now. And this is what makes it possible if all vehicles, and this is the way manufacturers are now going, they are properly adopting every part of the standard so that all of the protocols will be enabled and present on every vehicle and that will allow potentially any AC charge point to be able to effectively communicate in a bi-directional manner, give electrons to the vehicle or take electrons from the vehicle in a successful way. Um, whether it's worth waiting, well battery prices are massively falling so a static home storage battery it may just become a no-brainer if battery prices continue to fall but according to Goldman Sachs this is leveling off we shall see a realistic timeline I don't know vehicles are already equipped with this kind of technology new ones are anyway regulations have kind of caught up and are kind of there we're waiting for charge points to become available and then we need to make sure that all of this is cost effective because if the charge points are super expensive like the Indra one is and if the only vehicles that fully support this bi-directional uh, protocol of the CCS protocol of uh, V2G or V2H or V2X um, if they're all super expensive then this timeline of 2020 sometime some year could be pushed back even further but I'm hopeful it will be in the next couple of years and maybe 2025 will be the year where we'll see a big breakout of these companies starting to roll out bi-directional AC charge points. If you've made it this far then you've found some value in this video but 99% of my viewers they aren't subscribed they won't leave won't like the video and they won't leave a comment and that affects how many people we reach with messages like this. So if my little bit of research and a little bit of geeking out, I hope it wasn't too technical. I didn't want to get into the weeds of it. I wanted to make this a kind of broad brush summary of what I found out about V2G and why I'm not holding off and waiting for it because I still think until it, there's mass adoption, we probably are still five plus years away to be perfectly honest once we factor in the life cycle of when people change cars when people are going to be willing to upgrade their charge points and then potentially barriers behind the 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 meter you know the dno side of exporting and grid connection and stuff i i still see that this this rollout is not going to come like a tidal wave it's going to come little by little uh, step by step thank you for watching and please do one of those things like subscribe comment blah 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 goodbye see you on the next one